What I'd like to do today is install the water block on the motherboard, see how that goes and what kind of work is required. Uh, and then we'll move on to the graphics card. Once that's done, I can put everything back in the case and start working on the loop. So I wanna get this thing going as quickly as I can. So let's get to the motherboard and dive right in. Now we've got the motherboard out of the case and we're ready to start installing the water block. Now in order to install the water block, we're gonna actually have to remove the VRM heat sinks. So those heat sinks are here and here. And so we are going to be removing the back plate, which we've already done, the kind of factory back plate. The water block actually comes with its own back plate. And so let's take a quick look at the water block and then we can delve into starting to take off the VRMs, which will require removing a lot of screws from the back side of the board. And we'll have to be very careful because all the little components on this board are pretty sensitive. So we don't want to put too much weight on it. Uh, this is kind of something you want to do when you're alert. Maybe when you have had just the right amount of coffee, not too much coffee. And if you haven't had any coffee or you're not feeling alert, don't try this. This is the EK Quantum Momentum CPU water block that uh, took a little bit of time on pre-order to get from EK, but this is a full monoblock. So it is designed to cover the VRM on the motherboard as well as the CPU. So this is designed for the Crosshair 8. Uh, it is compatible with the Dark Hero as well as the, the Dark Hero and the Crosshair 8 are essentially the same board just with upgraded components. So with this particular water block, the, there is a dedicated inlet port. So this is the dedicated inlet port that we need to use. And that's because that is where the fins are that's gonna be uh, positioned directly over the CPU. And you can see that by flipping it over and seeing this, please remove before use. This is where the CPU is gonna be. And then these are gonna be what cover the VRMs as well. So the uh, instructions for this do not come with the cooler. You actually have to download them online. And uh, the instructions are for the Crosshair 8, but it should be very similar for the Dark Hero. So it also has this little RGB because it is an RGB enabled water block. It does have this five volt uh, addressable RGB pinout that will actually be using a converter to attach to the Corsair Commander Pro so that we can control all of our RGB from one application and not have to have several applications installed. So now we're gonna start taking apart the motherboard according to the instructions provided by EK. Uh, I will be videoing this over top of the motherboard so I'll try kind of patching in screenshots from the instructions as I'm going so that you can kind of follow along in case you're wanting to put an EK water block or another mono block uh, of similar size, shape, and application onto your motherboard as well. All right, so we'll start off by removing these screws here and these screws here. Those are the screws that are holding in the VRM heat sinks. Uh, it is also recommended to remove the IO shield as well, uh, removing these two screws here, and that will allow you to um, install the monoblock a little bit easier, and then you can reinstall that IO shield once the monoblock uh, has been installed. So we'll go ahead and remove these screws. And we're just gonna need a little bit of a smaller bit for that. With the smaller bit, we can now remove these screws. And I don't apply any pressure. There's really no need to apply pressure. Um, the screws are not in that tight. And you also don't wanna flex the motherboard. You wanna kinda of keep it as flat as possible. Although it is kinda of awkward having an upside down motherboard, I gotta say. So these four screws effectively come out and then those heat sinks will be loose. Now you also wanna be careful not to drag the screw across the back of the motherboard because if you do, then you could damage again some of the traces, some of the smaller components. So just use a lot of caution when you're working around the back side of the motherboard, especially if you're using something like a sharp edge like your screwdriver tip. Uh, you could really do a lot of damage to the motherboard if you're not careful with that. All right, so the IO shield is gonna be actually these three screws here. This one here, one, uh, almost, there we go. And two, one here, right there. And then three, this one right here. I definitely do not have the precision hands of a surgeon, but if you're cautious and slow, 
and take your time and do it right, you won't have any problems. So with those removed, we should quite easily be able to remove the heat shields from the other side of the motherboard. So we'll just flip it over ever so carefully, just putting all my, my fingers on the VRMs as well as the IO shield. We can rotate that around and now we can remove the IO shield, which is just ever so slightly underneath the Supreme FX uh, cover here. So actually this shield's gonna have to come off as well. So we'll flip it back upside down, we'll remove that shield as well. So that IO shield in the back is only put in by the far screw on the top left corner, or I guess if you're looking at the other side of the monitor, it's just right at the bottom edge where the uh, sound effects heat shield is as well. So you wanna remove that and then carefully flip it over so that you can remove the VRM heat sinks as well as the IO shields. All right, so this one essentially just pops right off like that. It's really just a piece of plastic. So that's actually not really doing anything as far as being a heat sink. And then this IO shield here, just have to be careful because it is RGB. So there's an entire RGB uh, wire here. So you don't want to actually pull that out. Again, anytime you're taking anything apart, just be gentle. Uh, you don't want to force it and then damage something. This is also just plastic. We don't want to scratch it up because we want it to look good. So we're going to be careful with that. The uh, VRM heatsink is one piece and just comes off ever so slightly like that. And you can see that applied on the back are the thermal pads. We'll be applying thermal pads the same way uh, for the, with the thermal pads that came included uh, with the monoblock as well. So I'm just gonna clean up the edges. Of, there's a little bit of like fingerprinting on here from when I took it out of the box. I'm just using a paper towel because it's good at absorbing grease. Uh, very absorbent compared to something that I just smear it around and just make sure that there's no problems with that. Now, the surface here is a little bit rough, but it's not gonna matter because we're gonna have the thermal pads on there anyway. Before we install this, the most important thing, it's gonna be kind of hard to cool this system without a CPU. So we've already removed the 3600 XT. Now we've gotta put in the 5950X. And remember, these have pins on the CPUs, so don't drop it. Don't bend the pins. These CPUs are definitely not cheap. So we'll pull the 5950X out of the box. Handy dandy X-Acto knife. There it is, the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. Um, I can't wait to try this thing out and check out the single core performance. It is going to be insane. I think it'd be kind of hilarious if they put the wrong notation on the CPU and somebody else got a 5600X instead of a 5950X. Uh, but that's just my dark sense of humor, I suppose. So let's get this installed and then we can put the monoblock in the motherboard as well. Moment of truth, 5950X getting mounted in the AM4 slot. I'm actually kind of nervous because these, every time I do this with a top end CPU, I go, oh my God, what if something bad happens? Lucky for me, I am going to be extremely careful installing this CPU into the slot. And there we go, snug. Give it a little wiggle, just make sure it's in there good. And here we go. All right, that is now mounted in the motherboard. So, so next what we'll need to do is we'll need to take the thermal pads and we're gonna have to actually cut these down to put them on the monoblock so that we can apply it to the VRMs and to the CPU. I really wanna do this with some kind of precision because you can see the thermal pads on the stock VRM, uh, they're very, very small. So we kind of want to go for something about that size. We're literally just aiming to have it covering uh, just the outside components here. We also need to make sure that the bottom piece is going to be thick enough to cover the top components here. And so that should be sufficient right there. We're just going to kind of eyeball it and then we're going to go ahead and give it a quick slice and that should be good enough to cover those components. All right, so here we go. Apply some pressure and slice. Of course, we're getting a little bit of wood shavings there as well, but now we've got a nice precision cut thermal pad that's literally just gonna cover those back components. They recommend applying this directly to the VRM components uh, and then placing the monoblock on top. And that's just gonna make sure you don't have any alignment issues and you install it properly. And now we'll apply that to the VRM components 
And then we'll be ready to uh, put in the new back plate, which is actually this one here. And it does come with some of its own mounting hardware. It comes with its own heat sink compound, but we will be using our Arctic MX4 compound instead, just because uh, I've been using that for a long time and I swear by it. So we're not gonna use that EK compound. All right, so applying the thermal pads is pretty easy. Uh, there's two plastic layers. There we go. There we go, that's a little better. All right, so again, just pull, uh, apply that onto the components. Just run your finger across it so it kind of sticks a little bit. And there you go, we're good. So when we're before we apply the monoblock, we're actually gonna have to remove that plastic cover off of these as well. And we've got our last thermal pad, so let's get that installed and drop it right on there. All right. Perfect. So now it's time to apply our MX4 thermal compound and we're actually going to use a little spreader. I prefer to use a spreader. Uh, you can X dot rice grain, whatever you want. I like to use a spreader. I just find I get better temperature results every time that I do. You don't need a lot, just a tiny little amount of dew, kind of like a grain of rice. And then you can just spread it around. And if you find that you've spread it around and it's super thin and you're still needing more, you can do that. Plus, MX4 is really sticky, so it will stick to the spreader quite a lot. Uh, so you just need to kind of spread it around nice and flat. And you're gonna get a nice coverage. All right, so that is good. That is all we need. That is a sufficient layer of heat sink compound in order to get a good contact between the monoblock and the heat spreader. You don't need any more than that. Doing a big long line here and a big long line here, you're gonna get way too much thermal compound down there and you're not gonna be cooling your CPU to the best advantage you can. If you've got a smaller hole on your uh, applicator, then sure, if you put tiny little beads, you're probably okay. But why risk it? I'm gonna be bolting this monoblock to the motherboard. I don't wanna to have to take it off again after doing all my plumbing. These thermal pads just, uh, they're, they're not very rigid. They're very, very pliable. So getting the plastic off of them and getting everything to cooperate requires a bit of patience. But again, take your time, do it right. Don't rush it, because when you rush, that's when things go wrong. All right, so now that we've got those fully applied, all the plastic removed, we can go ahead and get our monoblock set up for mounting. Now, in order to get the monoblock on, we're gonna need to apply this. This is gonna be the new back plate. They've just got a little pad here to protect the back side of the motherboard. So we'll apply that to the back of the motherboard, and then we're gonna have the screws coming through the back of the motherboard to bolt into the monoblock. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to navigate, because we'll need to bring the motherboard up in order to attach it to the monoblock. So one of, one of my recommendations would be to disconnect the RGB lighting from the motherboard, uh, just because this is gonna take a little bit of uh, acrobatics. There we go. So now that we've got that disconnected, we can move the motherboard around any way we want in order to get the, mo the monoblock installed. The next most important thing, because everything we do is most important, remove this before putting the monoblock on. Okay, so this monoblock is going to just line up ever so carefully with the holes. And it's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit here because of the RAM slots. But we should be able to get that in there and it'll just scooch right underneath where the RAM slot is ever so perfectly to align up very nicely. It's just gonna cause this clip to move forward just a hair, probably about a millimeter. And so now we've got that kind of mostly lined up. We can get the monoblock bolted into the motherboard. So with this monoblock, we're gonna actually use the longer screws, and those are gonna be the ones that go through the back plate into the monoblock. Then there are some shorter screws that are gonna be used to, uh, with a washer to put it into the other sides of the monoblock that are right up against the motherboard uh, where we don't have a back plate. First one's always gonna be the hardest. Once you get the first one in, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, we've got that mounted. And 
the toolkit comes with a tiny itty bitty little Allen wrench and we'll just use that to screw that in. I like to do opposite corners just so that you can kind of when you're working on the tension that you're uh, doing it corner by corner and then tightening up one more time at the end. Kind of like putting a wheel on a car. So after installing the two corner screws, we flipped it upside down to install the other two corner screws, as well as a screw here, 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 and here, in order to hold the monoblock down and mount it at the VRM, as well as around the CPU. These are not spring-loaded, so you don't need to tighten them up to the point where you know, you're reefing on it. Probably using the short side, just like this, is gonna be more than sufficient to tighten them. If you're hand tightening them and they won't move, you're good to go. You don't need to over tighten these. Uh, you don't need to reef on it. Just make sure that they're snug. And the same thing with these other small screws. Just make sure they're snug. Um, you don't need to over tighten them. The washers are plastic, so they'll have a bit of give. And just give it a little tightening. And because you're using thermal pads, you might want to give it maybe a couple of minutes to just settle. And then come back and just tighten these screws just a little bit, just a hair again, just to make sure that they're snug. If you're tightening them, just putting a little bit of pressure and that moves, then just kind of keep going until it's snug. And same thing with these. You shouldn't have to use two hands to snug these up. If they're snug with one hand, you're good. These uh, monoblocks are designed with a lot of uh, very slim tolerances. So once you've got the uh, screws in, it's really just to hold it in place and get that mounted. All right, so there we have it. The mono block is installed. When I was installing the block, it, it uh, pushed the RAM clip up, which kind of scared me because I'm going, oh no, maybe a capacitor broke off. But no, it was just the clicking from the RAM clip there. So now that we've got that installed, the uh, VRMs have the thermal pads keeping them cool. We uh, you know, count our plastic, one, two, three, and four. Over on the left, they're so thin. There's four, so I definitely removed all of those. And then I've also got four of these little guys floating around for the other side. So I definitely removed all of those. We removed this. Let's get the double check because once I start installing my loop, there's no going back. Now, the one thing that I didn't do is I didn't rinse this out with distilled water. And that's something you should do. Uh, got a little bit overzealous because I'm really wanting to get this set up. Uh, but yeah, you want to rinse out your water blocks all your tubing, your radiators, rinse everything out with distilled water first before putting anything in them. Now, I'm assuming that EK will have already rinsed these out thoroughly before shipping them. However, they may not have. So there may be some uh, residue or things like that still within the block. Now, the instructions themselves don't actually talk about rinsing out the block, but it's a good, good idea to do it just to ensure you're not contaminating your liquids. Well, that's it. The monoblock's installed. The motherboard is mounted into the case. Uh, the next step I'm going to be doing is working on the video card, getting the water block installed on the video card. So I wanted to kind of have the motherboard fully prepped so that once the video card is done, I can just slap it in and we can start plumbing, getting the radiators and fans set up and uh, kind of continue building this. So. In the next video, I'll do the graphics card water block and we'll go from there. Stay tuned, stay subscribed, and we'll see you in the next video for installing the water block on the 3090. Thanks for watching.